So, I've been trying to make my way around and meet all of you, but if you haven't um, spoken to me yet, my name is Michelle D'Souza. Um, I finished my PhD here at the University of Guelph quite recently in April. Since then, I've been working here at the Institute, and quite recently, I've been thinking about communicating effectively as we transition from Eyeball 1 to Eyeball 2. So, as I said before, um, I really, really want in these next 15 minutes to get your feedback in any way that you can. Um, be as detailed as you'd like or as brief as you'd like. I'll take any of that data. So the focus of this presentation largely will be around the, um, the new website. Um, I'll briefly talk about some of the target audience that we designed the website around, um, some design and functionality, as well as some of the content. And then touch upon just a little bit uh, more, um, a few tools that we can use moving forward as well. Okay, so the new website, when we were designing it, we were treating it as a business card, a guide to data and resources, and an avenue to um, address news, events, and awareness. Now, there's various um, types of target audiences that sit around these types of topics, and there might be different priorities based on your particular country. So I really want to hear about where those priorities lie for you and the people around you in your countries. In terms of design and functionality, if we go to what the old website used to look like, there are lots of good aspects and lots of um, and some aspects that can be approved upon. And so that was kind of the basis for structuring the new site. So one of the really good things about the old website was there was a lot of information, really, really useful resource. However, it was really, really text heavy, and this meant that a lot of the messaging was getting lost. Just to illustrate this, if you ask the question, what is eyeball? This is the page that you get. So the heart of the question is really, really hard to get answered um, with this type of structure. One thing that was done really well was this focus on news and updates, awareness. However, um, not often updated. So really, really outdated information. And this type of thing is really important, especially if you want to drive traffic to a website, as well as build up that awareness base. So definitely somewhere where we need to focus a little bit more energy and resources. And the one big thing, it wasn't mobile friendly. So this is a really important thing to consider as more people are using their phones to access this type of information. So something we built into the new website. So currently the new website isn't um, officially launched. Um, however, you can look at it, and I hope you have already. And this new website, we tried to focus on images, clear messaging, and once again, that mobile friendly environment. So as I move through this presentation, I have these long screenshots. You're clearly not going to be able to take a look at the text in this, but what I want you to get an idea of is the design, the layout, and I'll talk a little bit about the content as I move through the presentation. So when you enter the site, the homepage um, illuminates with a the theme, illuminating biodiversity. This is to capture attention and get a clear message across. It then scrolls down and you identify the problem, we provide the solution, as well as introduce ourselves eyeball and what we want to do. When you keep scrolling down, you find out what we want to do through our vision, you find out how we plan to do it through our three projects, and you find out where we are now with the launching of the um, eyeball phase two. And then you scroll down a little bit further, and it highlights kind of the three talking points that you'll find throughout the website. The impact that eyeball is having, the resources that they are making available, and the strategies that are being used to communicate ideas to the community. And mobile friendly once again. Okay, so I'm gonna go through some of the content. I hope you can kind of see that, but this is the menu as it's laid out onto the website. So it has an about section, eyeball one, eyeball two, and those three categories again, impact, resources, communication. We kept the about section very simple, about eyeball and about DNA barcoding. And when we look at eyeball, we talk about our vision, our story, and our history. So in terms of our vision, developing DNA-based systems for the discovery and identification of all multicellular life. Our story touches upon those three projects, one which is already completed, eyeball one, which was the foundation for the work, Eyeball 2, which we're in the, in the phase of launching, which is expanding the reference library and demonstrating its utility. And Eyeball 3, where we'll illuminate the globe and complete the inventory of multicellular life. Our history, 
This is a page where you can toggle through, and starting from 2003, where DNA barcoding was introduced down to where we are today, you can see some of the key events that have occurred, along with as many pictures as we could find for meetings. If we take a look at DNA barcoding, we've kept it quite simple. We talk about the process, the DNA barcode itself, the library, and the applications. This is what it looks like here, clean and simple. Through the library, you can actually uh, access both directly, and the applications will take you to, into a more detailed page, which I'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so I will phase one. What do we find there? Um, it outlines some of the key results, some of the key outcomes, the nation nodes that participated, and the sponsors that contributed. Just to highlight how I structured the key outcomes, so these are outcomes that, once again, were put into these categories, impact, resources, and communication, and these are the ones that you can find up in the menu. Eyeball two, objectives, member nations, and sponsors. So potentially a little bit sparse, but what I'd like to see being populated here are clearer objectives and a little bit more of the initiatives that are going on specifically within each country. You can find a map here as well as um, links to the institutions that belong to each country. We also have the leadership involved in Eyeball Phase 2. This is the diagram that Paul talked about yesterday. And you can click in and meet all of the board of directors. Um, thank you, everyone, for um, being willing to provide some context and pictures here on such an artist as well. Um, and I would encourage you here as well, if you have any kind of social media platforms or um, any side of context for your research, it's a really great place to showcase that as well. So under our impacts, we really want, I wanted, we wanted to highlight a few things here. So DNA barcoding applications. So this is where um, we see the benefits to society, if you will. Bibliometrics, the benefits to the larger research output in the scientific community. And policy and capacity building, which we just heard a little bit about today, or a few minutes ago. So with the DNA barcoding applications, uh, we wanted to highlight a diversity of uses and link the conceptual with the concrete. And what I mean by that is, um, well, so here are the four large categories that we um, highlight, environmental monitoring and assessment, wildlife protection, citizen science and education and quality assurance and control. I'll just highlight one of these here, but please do take a look at all of them, environmental monitoring and assessment. And here, what I would really like to see is these um, concrete links to media. So how we're actually using this application within particular nations, for example. So where we could kind of use this as a tool to really um, showcase how DNA barcoding is being used on the ground. In terms of bibliometrics, so how we are growing with our research output, really important stats here. Um, so just the growth of barcoding studies that have happened across time. And then just a little bit of interesting comparisons across the genomics um, enterprise, as well as um, a really large mega project, uh, the Hubble Space Telescope. So just a couple of stats there. And finally, policy and capacity building. I think I can whiz through this since you just got a really large talk on it. Um, how DNA barcoding is informing some of these strategies and the training that's sitting around all of those types of initiatives. Once again, a lot of growth that can happen here with the specific <coughs> training happening in each of your sites, lots of photographs we can showcase, a lot of context to put through this as we move forward um, in publishing the site and building on it. So the resources that IBOL is helping support and grow, National History Collections. So here, um, including, um, what I would like to see and I'm working on is including a list of where all of the voucher specimens that are sitting in bold are actually being held in collections. So I've highlighted here just the largest collections that we have so far. Our sequencing facility, which you'll hear a lot more about in a little bit, as well as our bioinformatics platform. So here, these are just kind of general overviews of resources, and it's really just a tool to then link you out to more information, where the content is actually heavily sitting behind other websites. Here, we're just highlighting what you can do and where you can go to find it. In terms of communication, so these are the key ways that we are talking about the research output and activities surrounding eyeball. 
something I'm sure all of you are aware of. Um, we have the barcode bulletin, and so we're going to hopefully, with everyone's collaboration here, work to reinvigorate that and start talking and showcasing more about the research um, that's happening as we move into phase two. The international conferences that we participate in, once again, really good opportunity to showcase talks and abstracts. And of course, a lot of the publishing that happens, these special issues that come out of a lot of these conferences, showcasing those publications as well in an easy and accessible form. All right, um, so that's it for the website. Like I said, we're still looking for a lot of feedback um, and a lot of content to be driven out of the particular countries and networks that you're working on. We really want to um, showcase that on this website um, especially if you have websites already for the networks that you've built building in, we can really um, use this as a platform to then kind of show the connectivity across these various networks. So please, 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 I encourage you to use those little feedback forms and write down any information that we can then bring on and showcase through this website here. Um, and what really we can start to do on this website is um, incorporate eyeball news and updates. So this is what I hope to, we hope to incorporate into the website as we move forward. So a way for everyone here in this room and across all of these different networks to get the updates that are occurring across, um, across the different um, organizational levels, if you will, as well as a media coverage desk. So here, once again, having your support would be really, really great. So when there's any sort of media coverage happening within your country, and you showcase it on any website or media platform, I encourage you then to also have it um, sent over to a media desk that we will start to uh, curate all of these types of news feeds. And having you actively contribute to us will be a lot more effective than having someone here looking for all of those resources, because it's really hard for one specific country to do that across international across the internet. Um, so having that participation is really, really great. If that's something that you could look into and maybe recommend someone or a group of people, please write that person's name down or their email down. If you could kind of think about those types of connections, I think that will really, really be beneficial as we move forward in trying to really highlight all of the research and innovation and interesting discussions that come out of each and every group um, that is sitting in this room. And finally, there's a lot of other things we could talk about, right? So social networks, media relations, public outreach. And I think one of the ways in which we maybe fell short with Eyeball One is spreading ourselves too thin. And so maybe it's worth discussing some of the priority areas that we would like to touch upon in a kind of global context. I'm sure there's a lot of this work that's being done within each and every single initiative within your country. Um, however, kind of bringing that together um, is, I think, a very important um, thing to think about as we move forward. So with that, thank you very much. My email's right here. Please fill out those feedback forms. Thank you.